The mountain behind me is 50 million years old, and from it, we can see the plains come alive with game. This week, I'm in the Eastern Cape of South Africa on a safari of a lifetime. You're watching The High Road, Africa. What an absolutely spectacular morning. You know, I started out by having a cup of coffee, looking out over the gigantic vastness that exists out here, and it looks just like the Texas Hill Country. But folks, I'm halfway around the world from the Texas Hill Country. I'm in Africa, and we're fixing to get started. As we begin today's adventure, I want you to know that I've been looking forward to this trip for 15 years. Joining me on this hunt is my son, Colton. It's Colton's first trip to Africa, and he's also been looking forward to this for many years. Oh my gosh, that was a long shot right there. <laughs> oh man almighty, look at that. Oh man, that's a heck of a long shot right there. Head drop, yeah, we can tell that. Well, this is what we came down here on this particular property to really specifically hunt was the kudu. And I mean to tell you what an awesome hunt this was. What do you think? No, <laughs> it was a hell of a long shot. It was what, 422 yards, winded our, winded our backs, and we made it count. Well done to that shot. The, uh, the thing that gets me is if you take a look at a kudu, I mean, that, they've got it all. I mean, they look at the big hump on their back, great big tall hump on the back, and then take a look at how big their ears are. I mean, the ears are just huge. All the better to hear you with. They got a big old nose and they can smell real well. And their horns are just beautiful. This beautiful spiral right here. Little ivory tip right here on the end. That is nice. And as far as kudu goes, you said this is a mature bull, huh? Yeah, this is a really old bull. <laughs> and how can you tell? Well, you, first of all, you look, you look at the spirals. He's, he's got the full two and a half turns that you actually look for. The ivory tips at the end. And then you're gonna see the condition, you know, the body's down. And obviously I checked the teeth when we got here. He's a really, really old bull. 
Easy. Very sneaky bull too. How long did we sit there waiting for him? Almost an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you something. Uh, talk about the sense of smell and yeah. the need to keep your scent down. Talk about how important that is. Well, you have to get your wind right. These, besides the big ears and the big eyes, these animals, they're not known as the grey ghost of Africa for nothing. They'll disappear in you in a second, you know. I mean, look at the stripes on them. They are just beautifully camouflaged and Bruce. I appreciate it. Well done, Keith. Thank you very, very much. Again, this is a different property and uh, the mountainous stuff over at Hunter's Hill, but uh, it's still run by the same folks and they've got tons of game and we've got lots of time left in the day. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Armasite, the titanium vacuum sealer, supercharged scent killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%. BSA Optics, Gamo Adult Precision Air Rifles, Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, and Grave Digger Broadheads. The High Road will be right back. I want to make sure, pay attention to this, hold this camera very, very still. This is super important. Okay, got my microphone perfect. All right, we're good to go, son. Rolling. All right, well, we started out this morning and uh, we were after a kudu and lo and behold, we got a kudu. We came to a different piece of property. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Colton, there's something wrong with my microphone. Go ahead and... Hold up. No, there's something wrong with my mic. I'm telling you, I need you to come here. Okay. Come on, come on. I'm not hearing it. No, come here. All right, there's something wrong right here. Maybe you got it mute on. No, 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 look at the camera right there. Okay. Folks, Colton had no idea. Bruce, tell him what's going on. Well, we wanted to introduce you. Was you gonna have you shooting next? No way. On camera, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. So that's there's nothing wrong with my mic except for you don't have it on. You're on deck, buddy boy. Thank you. Love you. I love you too, Tom. I don't even know what we're stalking. What are we stalking? Stalking up, we got two of them right here, right over the top of this hill. Just to come along on a trip like this as a cameraman is such an honor for me. So as a hunter, this is what dreams are made of. I've had the opportunity, at least the chance, to go to Africa several times, but have never been able to go up to this point because my mom was always concerned about the safety of coming over here. A few times my dad went to Zimbabwe and to South Africa. She was very much concerned, so I wasn't allowed to go. But South Africa is very safe, and I've found that this is, if you're going to go to Africa, this is the place to go. And we're here. It's a great experience, and I wasn't expecting the surprise that came to me. What an amazing animal, huh? I mean, that's just incredible. Now for your first animal in Africa, your first shot in Africa, yeah. that was ex 
exciting, it was brilliant. Yeah, when I saw him drop, I just couldn't believe how quickly he went down. I mean, I'm very much impressed. I mean, he's got a beautiful coat, nice horns. I mean, is this a good one? Oh, it's a brilliant one. Yeah, you know, well, it's... This is a really superb trophy. You know, he's, he's one of the best we've taken all year. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, and to take him on a spot and stalk hunt is just so rewarding for me. I mean, Africa's vast, and I've had the opportunity to be behind the camera, you know, all this hunt, and to step in front of it is just such an honor for me. i got to thank you, Bruce. Well thank done. you for this well hunt. Done. And thank you, Daddy. I love you. I... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're rolling, aren't you? I love you, too. All right. Bruce, thanks. I'm not going to kiss you. <laughs> I, I never kissed a South African. I'm not no. going to do it. But anyway, this has been a heck of a trip, and it was a surprise. I mean, Bruce and I worked this deal out, and Colton got to get on deck, and uh, you shot a magnificent animal, and I'm very proud of you. And now you're here. I'm here. Dream come true. I'm proud of you. Thank well, you. I'm proud of you. Well done, Thanks guys. for putting up with All us. Right. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Reconyx, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feed, Burt Coyote's Luminoc, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Elevators, Diamond Down Thermal Gear, Ion Cameras, and Tannerite. The High Road will be right back. Tannerite brand binary exploding rifle targets presents viewer feedback. This is from a fellow by the name of Jack. He's from New York. He says, hey Keith, I'm in the market for a new safari rifle. I'm wondering if you had any recommendations. I want a rifle that is accurate and not too heavy because I do a lot of spotting and stalking. Thanks for your advice. Jack, that's a really good question. It's hard for me to, to really tell you specifically exactly what I would recommend because there's lots of questions. What are you going to be hunting? How far are you going to be shooting? Do you need to have open sights or do you need to have variable power scope? Uh, there, there's lots of questions. Uh, more than likely, what I would recommend is a bolt action rifle. Uh, I'd recommend something that you can shoulder real quickly. Uh, and what I like to do when I'm safari hunting, I like to actually take something that I use in North America, North American big game. Unless I'm hunting dangerous game in Africa, I'm using the same stuff over in Africa that I am in the United States for big game like mule deer, elk, and bear. So, you know, as far as a, a specific answer to your question, I can't give you one. There's just too many variables, but I would definitely go with a good bolt action rifle that shoulders quickly. Okay, Keith, this area here for later afternoons is very good for smaller game and some big war dogs like to come out here. Let's we'll see what we can find here. Okay, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a very good one. You see him standing up? Yes, there. yes. You take your time. He's a small target, but he's got beautiful horns on him. Okay, just wait for me to turn. Okay, let's turn him. Take the shot before he goes into okay. the bush. Ready, Colton? Ready. Got him. Got him. What a shot. You come looking for those small little animals, you just don't find them yet. Holy smoke. I mean, we just got here. We just got here, folks. We wound up, we have been, <laughs> we have had one heck of a day. <laughs> I mean, to tell you what, I, I looked over, I saw a cootie right there. They walk in and all of a sudden you're looking down there and you see a diker. And not just a diker, wait till you see the horns on that one. Really? That is a serious diker. The longer we walked out of here, the more excited I became. Bruce said that is probably the biggest diker of his career. And folks, let me tell you something. His career is like Emmett Smith's career in football. That if Emmett Smith said that's probably one of the best plays I've ever seen in football, you're gonna pay attention to it. Well, that's one of the best diker of Bruce's career. That's saying something. All right, so this is what a diker looks like, folks. And although he may not look very big to you, um, Bruce, tell him about this diker compared to most dikers. Well, it's, it's exceptional. It's the best I've ever taken with some with a client of mine hunting with me. And it forms part of the tiny 10. You know, when guys have been to Africa a few times and all of a sudden they say, well, I want to start hunting the smaller stuff, it's not that easy. You know, you, you hunt hard for them. And 
We were actually here hunting warthog, and this exceptional, exceptional dike walked out in front of us, and I didn't have to squeeze your arm too hard to take him. <laughs> no, I had no idea that it was as small a target as what it is. I mean, it is a very tiny animal, but the horns are exceptional. And you were saying, compare this uh, horn-wise to like a kudu. No, this is like a 60-inch kudu. You, you, you know, your four inches is, is gold medal on these animals. This one is five and a half. You know, these small animals, every quarter inch counts, you know. This is a beautiful trophy. I am thrilled to death to take it. And the cool thing is coming here to Africa and coming with Greg and with Bruce is they've got all these animals on their properties. You don't have to be spending all day long driving around and trying to uh, spend more time in the truck than you do actually hunting. And so I would highly recommend give these guys a call if you've ever thought about coming to Africa. These are the guys to come with. Or if you've ever been to Africa and you want to come with somebody who's really unbelievable great, give Hunter's Hill Safari a call. Bruce, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Mr. Diker. What a trophy. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Walls Outdoor Goods, Liberty Safe, Oil Field Camo, Savage Arms, OpticsPlanet.com, Darton Archery, Vortex Range Finders, Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%, Castle Rock Outfitters, Gerber, and Wild Bucks Outdoors. I've had 15 years to find the perfect African outfitter, and during that time, I can't tell you how many outfits I considered. But I chose Hunter's Hill Safaris for many reasons. But without a doubt, one of the most important reasons was the property that we would hunt. Now, unlike many African outfitters, Hunter's Hill Safaris owns their own land. And what's so impressive about this is that the size of their property is huge and the diversity of species that live here is just incredible. This meant that we wouldn't spend valuable time driving long distances to other properties like many outfitters do. Of course, this long driving time getting to different hunting areas is one of the things that most outfitters do not disclose to hunters when they book their trips. Yes, they may be able to offer hunting for a wide variety of species, but they do so by spending many hours a day driving to other hunting land. Hunters Hill owns two different hunting areas. One of them has more than 50,000 contiguous acres of some of the most rugged and diverse terrain in the Eastern Cape. I've been personally guiding for 18 years. I met Greg 12 years ago and we established what we now call Hunter's Hill Safaris. The beauty of Hunter's Hill is if you're a first time customer, client or third, fourth return client is when you come here, if let it be your first safari, you're gonna to get to see 20, 30, 40 different species. It's just the time you leave here, you almost know what you wanna shoot the next time around. Our safaris are range from seven days to 10 days, but what most people do, first times, we do package deals, and that includes the price you get, includes everything from the time we pick you up at the airport till the time we drop you off. It's all included in that seven day hunt, or if it may be, a 10 day hunt, whichever you choose. 
A lot of people think coming over to Africa is very expensive, but our prices are very competitive. In fact, I think you could do a seven day hunt for less than it would take you to shoot a white-tailed deer in the States. We have a great website where you can get all this information. Or, if you want, just call us and we can give it to you all over the telephone and we're waiting for your call. Going to Africa is life-changing, at least it has been for me. Plus it was for Colton. Africa is the kind of place that lures hunters back and back again. It's the kind of place that most hunters are always looking to find. A place that's still wild, rugged, beautiful, and full of wildlife. Today has been a good day to be alive, making memories that will last both of us a lifetime. And I've done it with my one and only son. Today, we not only celebrate the time that we spend together hunting in a new place, but we share mutual feelings that we have as hunters. Hunting is not just about the killing of an animal. To me and my fellow hunters, we know that hunting is always about the joy of the hunt. Ion Camera is the official sport camera used to film the high road.